All right, so our next speaker is Teka Teteke Meitai. And here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Right, OK. Teka Teteke Meitai is from the distant island nation of Kiribati. She's interested in marine protected areas, coral reef conservation, and preserving traditional marine management across the Pacific region. Teka Teteke, who goes by Kate here at Scripps, um, so I'll, I'll stick with that, <laughs> though I have been practicing. She, you know, the country that she comes from, like so many countries in the Pacific, is faced with some really unique and urgent challenges. And when I think of Kate, I think of somebody who really took a headwind and turned it into a tailwind by coming here to Scripps. Um, she came here to sort of tool up, get new training, uh, new skills, new knowledge, so that she could go back to her country and to her family and um, be a leader in that space. When Kate first got here, I thought Kate was quiet. <laughs> I thought, uh, Kate has this very, she does have this calming, balanced energy to, that I think she brings to the cohort, which has been really valuable. See earlier presentation on the energy of the cohort. But um, it's been really valuable to have that from Kate. But what you don't get right away, and what I think I first picked up when we were at Catalina, is that Kate is hilarious. And Kate is always smiling. It takes almost nothing to make her laugh. Um, she, she just has a really positive energy that she brings to everything she does, and she crushes at volleyball. <laughs> she will destroy you at volleyball. So I encourage you to try it sometime if you can catch her before she goes back to Kiribati. Uh, we're so lucky to have her here this year, and um, I'm really excited for her to share her presentation with us. So please join me in welcoming Teka Teteke Meitai. Um, tropical greetings to you all. Um, my name is Teratitike, but um, as you know, it's really complicated to pronounce it, so I go by Kate. Um, today, I'll be talking on what I learned as my capstone project throughout the year in this program. From many articles, literature, reviews, and reports, I'll present what lessons learned in marine management across the South Pacific. Here in South California, um, these are maybe the pictures that might inspire one another about the beauty of the ocean. The importance of why we should protect it. And it might make you think of the pristine and healthy environment. However, I am studying the South Pacific now, and as a South Pacific Islander, um, this might be look more than a pristine and, car and ocean and healthy environment. Here's what we think about it. The diverse way of reef fish is not about pristine and beauty, but dependence, which will not only feed our families, but also sustaining our communities. In fact, it went back from the beginning, our culture, our tradition, our well-being, and our connectedness. I came from a family whom they have a deep connection with the ocean my great-great-grandfather with his younger son lost in the sea. On that same night, my great-great-grandmother had a dream, and she was told to fetch them on the beach. Um, she did go there, but there were only two turtles crawling onto her feet. Um, a big male turtle and a young male turtle symbolizing my very own great-great-grandfather with his younger son. From that day forward, in our family rituals, we are forbidden to consume turtle's meat and not allowed to catch them. And this is how my connection begins with the ocean, and this is why I want to pursue and carry out this study. In my home country, like my family, we don't consume or eat turtle's meat. Some families are forbidden to fish and consume shark's meat. 
while some, they do not consume certain fish species. My story might not be different with some families in Vanuatu, Cook Islands, or in the Marshall Islands. So we're not alone. These things happen in a lot of places across the South Pacific. Our stories is what connect us with each other and that they turn into our way of conserving and protecting these marine resources. In these places, there are many variety of marine management tools. Not consuming other fishes, restricting fishing on certain fish species, closing access to important areas on certain and season times, are uh, mostly show us how to manage our own marine resources traditionally. For instance, the map showing here is the boundaries of traditional fishing grounds in Fiji, and they call it in Kolikoli. The light and darker blue shaded areas designate wider managed areas, and darker red designate no-take zones. So I'll, I will mainly talk on locally managed marine areas, going through what is and why is important. Analyzing of articles, literature review, and reports to see what makes LMMA successful and what's not across the South Pacific region. So LMMAs are defined as areas of near shore waters that largely managed at the local level by the coastal communities. So having LMMA as our traditional marine management is very important for us as it will definitely protect us from the risks of vulnerability. So the image here represents how the LMMA looks like in a blue box, which is an entire managed area of water, includes both fishing areas and restricted areas. The red dotted box can either be a spatial and periodic closure. And also shown in that image is a red circle identifying a species specific refugee. So getting deeper, I'll be explore, exploring these two questions that we guide so in determining which islands have more or less have success in LMMA. There are so many reports, articles, and literature reviews on LMMAs. However, this capstone project is mainly focused on how the change in governance concerning regulation and structure can achieve the conservation goals of LMMAs in the South Pacific region. There are 63 total number of articles which use and analyze in this project. So most of the South Pacific Islands have pre-existing LMMAs. However, the yellow shaded islands are the, are the study site for this research. So does an LMMA design process that integrates traditional methods result in more favorable conservation outcomes than one that does not? In response to that question, I look at the conservation outcomes based on the fisheries productivity, fisheries catch per unit effort, coral reef health, and LMMA tools. The fisheries productivity are measured as fish biomass within the LMMA boundaries. An increase and decrease of fishery CBUE, coral cover percentage define the coral reef health, and types of LMMA tools used throughout the islands. So I analyzed the information that I got from different references. The table here showed which island used more traditional or national tools for marine management. So the graph representing the conservation outcomes for each island shown or analyzed from the articles. The x-axis shows us how many articles are used for each island. And the y-axis displays the indicators, which are productivity, health, CPU, CPUE, and also the predictors, which is periodic and spatial closure. The shaded box boxes in yellow indicate the islands that integrated more traditional methods, while the non-shaded bar crafts are the islands that used less traditional methods. And if we look closer, there are 30 number of studies in which they analyze for the three islands that use traditional tools, while on the other hand shows the studies that use less traditional tools or more like national tools. So, but do we know for sure that these traditional methods work? If we compare their fisheries productivity, 
Highlands that integrate with more traditional tools have higher fisheries productivity. Not only that, but the health of their coral reef increase also shows that traditional have higher percentage of coral reef increase than the health of coral reef in national. And the catch bay unit effort within the LMMA also indicates that they have a higher increased CPUE than the national one. And for sure, we can clearly see that highlands which use traditional methods have more higher increased percentage in fisheries productivity, coral reef, and CPUE, which definitely tell us that it is working. If the LMMA design process integrated traditional method, they will have more favorable conservation outcomes that one does not. However, how these highlands do when it comes to governance, regulations, and rules? In this case, we are asking how different models of social hierarchy, such as chiefly community governance or national driven, impacts compliance with LMMA rules. Based on that, I'll be looking on how strong and weak their compliance and evidence of poaching regardless their LMMA's governance. So there are two keys of LMMA governance that have been used in the South Pacific. National governance is a top-down management where has rules and laws, regulations are made from the head of state. Chief community governance is a bottom-up management. Local governments, councils, communities have jurisdiction over the marine resources. So the decision with regulations for LMMA made under the guidance of traditional leaders or chief. The shaded yellow boxes are highlands that governed by a chief and community, while the non-shaded ones are governed by aid of state. So if we compare how strong and how weak their compliance, we can see that there is a stronger community compliance in highlands that governed by chief or community. And also, if we look at the evidence of poaching, the highlands that govern by chief or run in a community, they have less percentage in poaching. And the national governance or islands that govern by national, they have higher percentage of poaching, which lead us to, to the idea that social hierarchy Chief, chief community or national governance can impact compliance with LMMA rules. Chiefly, governance result in stronger compliance and weak poaching, while national governance result in weak or poor compliance with higher poaching. So I'm not going to say that national governance is a bad thing, but we all know that ideas and plans come from people in seminar rooms and board tables that are universal trained from a Western perspective. In this case, we do not have traditional people sitting in those tables, and their customary marine tenure or their traditional marine management knowledge got eliminated because there is a lack of community participation, and most of the knowledge, skills, belief that had been there for thousands of years are not recognized in national governance. So this resulted in higher poaching and weak compliance, which lead LMMAs to fail or not successful. Chiefly, community governance is about building LMMA on local and tradi traditional strength. It's about using those knowledge, skills, and customary tenure as a, as a management unit and avoiding inappropriate use of tools. If everyone is get on board and, knowledge, and local knowledge is not left behind, LMMA will be effective and successful. So the reason I did this is that I live in the Pacific Island, like I said, in Kiribati, and I really need to think about ways to apply this in my island. These observations are very informative and helpful, and I'm looking forward to work with communities and fisheries to try and think how can we use the strength and opportunities of LMMA and be able to avoid some pitfalls. I would like to conclude saying a quote from a chief 
of Aisoa Highland in Ulithi Atoll, Micronesian Islands, saying, we need to have a common understanding around management so that everyone agrees and supports it. Understanding the old ways can help us protect the ocean for our children and their children. And I want to emphasize the idea of looking back does not ignore the future. And looking ahead does not mean leaving past knowledge behind. Thank you. And I want to extend my appreciation and gratitude to my committee members and also to um, special thanks to these people. Thank you. First of all, Kate, that was amazing. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us the one thing that you're most excited to do when you get back to your home country and start tackling marine conservation there. Yeah, so um, I am planning to bring my presentation there and present my, my work. And also, um, if I have a chance to um, sit down with um, government officials that would be so amazing to talk with him, um, to talk with them, um, to talk with them about this um, LMMAs, and now we can set this up and like what, what are our solutions to any issues that we might um, encounter during this process. Fantastic presentation, Thank Kate. You. Um, I know that Kiribati has already at least one LMMA. Um, are they, is there another process in the works to create more LMMAs? Yeah, there is a, a process right now. They've been planning, and I'm hoping that I would get there in time and contribute in that work. We'll, we'll pass it down afterwards. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, First of all, would you say your first name again? Because it's beautiful when you say it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, can, can you speak a little bit about the coral reefs around your uh, native island and, and what you're seeing? Uh, there, are, you know, somebody like myself, I only read about the Great Barrier Reef, for instance. But I'm curious on the reef activity and, and how it might be uh, the health of it and such around your island. Um, so actually, my highlands are um, made from coral reefs, like atolls. They are mostly atolls. And um, I don't usually uh, snorkel around there or dive. So, but uh, there, is, there is some issue like with coral reef in my island. Like there is... Um, uh, problems with um, waste like that and also I'm working on a film that um, relates with coral reef conservation and I'm hoping in that film will bring um, more um, it, it, it's gonna be like an education material for people because I'm pretty sure that not most of people know about coral reef back home and I want to like do that film to inform them about coral reef. Okay, I have a question for you. The, the LMMAs um, seem to me to be very applicable, especially when you start taking into consideration some of the socioeconomic impacts of these, these areas. But it didn't escape us that these are little islands, and I'm wondering if the remoteness and the specific individuality of these islands makes that more applicable? Or do you have thoughts on how that might apply to, say, the coast of California and the impact of MPAs and the management of MPAs? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's a good question, but I'm not really sure. 
Well, the reason I was asking is that it just seems to me that you have all this local knowledge and all this local participation in the island communities you're talking about, but you have such diverse communities and such diverse needs in places like California, and I was wondering if it's less applicable to a bigger um, nation, state kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it, it could be, because um, I'm not really, like what I did throughout the, for my project, and I came up with an idea that if we like integrate national covenants with traditional covenants like, like that, if we involve um, communities, local communities, I think it's gonna be so successful and will be so applicable to every nation, small or large nation. Thank you. Sorry, we have one more question. Samantha, do we have time for one more? Oh, sure, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hi, yes, yeah, sitting in the back. <laughs> um, I thought your presentation was fabulous. And I have one comment and then a question for you. And the comment is um, that I just think this program is really wonderful that you're able to be here and it's a comment for both you and for Sam and the um, program in general that uh, you're here and that you bring the stories that you've seen to everyone in the program and the feedback between the, the program and this broader community that we're creating. Um, a few years ago, I had a student that did um, not exactly like this, but kind of a similar program, and she was, uh, or question, and she was working in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And she was looking at that relationship between traditional knowledge and Western scientific knowledge. And um, the visual that she came up with or that we worked on was a lay where traditional knowledge and Western knowledge are wrapped around each other. Each is strengthened by the other um, and trying to somehow express or visualize how one can um, work against the other, for the other, and make something new in the future. And so my question for you is, did you come across some good examples where there was really an integration or a feedback that you felt was innovative or um, a good lesson learned or some way for the uh, future? And specifically, how does Western science uh, fit into this? Uh, and work with traditional scientific knowledge of ecosystems. How would you, uh, do you have any good examples or ideas for, that you would um, put together for the future? Um, yeah, I have um, Solomon Highlands. They have uh, traditional, they integrate traditional and national. But there are some issues because like most people, they, they, I mean, they like to work with them, but somehow there's some differences in making decision. So that's like, um, give them like a, not in a really good place, like, yeah, but Solomon Highlands is a good example for that, like national and traditional. <laughs> 